Hello everyone. Welcome to seventh video in this series. In this video, we will discuss of one of the beating multiphysics cases, Joule heating. We will first go through the introduction, then discuss on different approach available in mechanical to handle the Joule heating application. And finally, we will go through the demo demonstrating the approach to solve the Joule heating using ANSYS mechanical. So let's start with the video. So first thing is that let's discuss about the Joule heating. So Joule heating phenomena also known as resistive heating or ohmic heating is one of the most well known multiphysics coupling and engineering and research. Electric heater, fuses, power lines and the heating of conductors in electronics are few example of Joule heating. Electric current may heat up a stru structure to high temperature at which point it may deteriorate structurally or even melt. Getting rid of this health heat as effectively uh, or as feasible is a design difficulty. FEA helps in overcoming this difficult uh, uh, this difficulty. Now the common applications are shown here, like uh, electric kettle, and the another one that is uh, winter heater. If you are from part of India, I belong, then you will also be enjoying the Joule heating phenomena using this winter heater. Now let's discuss why this is a multiphysics phenomena. So if you went through last video, then you might be aware that whenever two or more physics drive the behavior of a product, that behavior is known as multiphysics phenomena. For Joule heating, the simplest case will be electrical solve will solve the Maxwell equation and give the Joule heating. This Joule heating is uh, used as an input to the heat equation and the thermal solver is used to predict the temperature that will get developed inside the product and finally this temperature is used to predict the deformation or the mechanical stress that will get generated inside the product. Now the things become complex when one physics start affecting the another physics. For example, electric pro pro properties are function of temperature. Then we need to solve the problem in a coupled way. If the one physics is not affecting the another physics or the effect is something that is not significant, then we can solve the problem as a one way uh, coupled problem. So in next slide, it will become more clear. Now in mechanical, there are different ways. Like whenever you are working at a pro workbench project level, you will see that there are different approaches in which we can actually handle the Joule heating problem in mechanical. So first, uh, if you look, if we talk about the right, uh, left hand side, so left hand side, I have uh, put different approaches that will be used for solving a problem in a one way coupled approach. So another is a two way coupled approach. So two way coupled approach includes like full complex nonlinearity that might appro uh, that might uh, happen whenever you're subjected uh, when you were pro the product is subjected to joule heating phenomena so if we talk about one way coupling so the first one is very simple like uh, electric uh, solver will be used to predict the joule heating that joule heating will get transferred to your steady state thermal that will be used as a input heat source and that will uh, generate the actual temperature inside the product using the thermal solver and once that result is available we are again mapping that result to the static structure so this will give us the deformation and the mechanical stresses inside the system now second is that thermal electric coupled to a static structure in this case we are solving the thermal electric in a coupled way so this will be helpful if your electric properties are a function of temperature so in that case you can use the thermal electric system and we can solve this thermal electric in a coupled way and then transfer the results to the static structure to predict the deformation and mechanical stresses now uh, and one uh, because maxwell is something in ansys that is a dedicated solver for solving very complex industrial level uh, electrical uh, uh, components so then in that case suppose if you are solving some problem using the maxwell 3d then again, at the solution level, you can directly solve the transfer, the heat transfer or the joule heat that is getting developed and it, that is getting calculated under the Maxwell to the steady state thermal and steady state thermal will use the thermal solver to predict, to, uh, uh, give, to give tempera actual temperature that will de get developed in the product. And finally, we can transfer that to a static structure or even to the transient structure to predict the response, structural response of the system. Now the next is that in some cases what happens is that all the physics are actually talking with each other. Like you can take an example of uh, multi-physics contact like in which suppose two conductors are initially not in contact but once they start deforming after some time they are coming in contact with each other. So in that case what will happen you have to solve the problem as a coupled field problem because once those two surfaces are going to come in contact there are going to be some 
like uh, temperature continuity that will get this, uh, established between those two components. So maybe in some coming video, I will uh, take one example and show you that uh, uh, that uh, multiphysics contact involving electrical, thermal, and the static structure all in the, inside a single coupled field static. But just for a, for a timing, just keep in mind that you can use a coupled field static and coupled field transient solution to uh, predict joule heating in a most complex way. So here you can see whenever you are adding a coupled field transient and coupled field static under the physics region, you can control uh, define electric as a conduction. So in this case, the conduction equation will get solved for the electric part and then thermal we have to set it to yes and structural we can set it to yes. Now let's uh, go and discuss on the workflow using the means uh, uh, mechanical GUI. So I am going to take one example. So this is a very simple example in which a circular wire fixed at both ends is subjected to 0.1 voltage and grounded at another end. Wire is surrounded by an air domain at room temperature. We want to predict the temperature rise in wire due to the joule heating and also want to check the mechanical stress getting developed in the model. So let's start with the model. So I have already created this geometry. So let me first add, so let me solve this model using first a thermal electric system uh, or in a one-way coupling approach. So what I can do is that I can go to the thermal electric system. So I'm adding the thermal electric system because I want to define my electrical thermal uh, this, uh, properties, resistivity as a function of temperature. So I can, will transfer the geometry. So if you are importing the geometry or have already created some geometry, you can directly connect the geometry to the thermal electric system level. Now. To define this thing, what I will do is because under the general material, the copper alloy is available. And if you look at the copper alloy properties, so resistivity is also already a function of temperature. Now let me go back to the model. So once the geometry gets imported, so I'm going to use the default mesh. Now at one side, so whenever you want to apply any boundary condition, you can right click insert and all the boundary conditions will be available here. So here we want to apply 0.1 volt at one side, another side is grounded. So we can apply a voltage of zero on another side. Next is that we want, because this body wire is actually surrounded by an air domain at reference temperature or room temperature. So I can, and room temperature is 22 degrees centigrade. So I can add one convection, apply this convection to this face, and I will just give a value of film coefficient one. After that, I will also put some values so that five, five, 10, and solve this equation. So if you look at this, <clears throat> Let the model solve. So once the model gets solved, most of the post-processing quantities uh, or variables are actually available. So suppose if you go to the thermal, you can plot the temperature, total heat flux, directional heat flux. Under the electric, electric voltage you can plot. So let's first see that whatever the voltage that we applied is getting applied properly or not. So I can see from one end, it's starting from zero and another end it's going to 0 0.1. Next is that I can go and check the temperature. So temperature that is getting generated for this model is around 316.4. Uh, the another thing is that if you go to the electrical, you will also see the joule heat. So this will allow you to, in some cases, if you have some analytical uh, formulation or analytical equation available with you, you can also compare that how much heat is getting generated due to the joule heat. So the setup for the thermal electric is quite simple. So I will just repeat. So for applying the boundary condition, you can go here. So most of the boundary conditions are exposed for the thermal electric. In case if something is not there, we can definitely use the command snippet, but that is something that is for the advanced users. So if those things are not available, then only I will suggest using the command snippet approach. Now, the next thing is that let's now try to use the coupled system. Okay. So suppose at this point, I want to also predict the mechanical deformation and the stresses. I can go and drag and drop this is static structure from here to the solution level. So if I'm going to drag and drop here, so one thing is that if you are directly going to drag and drop, 
what will happen is that your mess is going to be the same under the static structural system. Or let it open. Now, once you can see, as we had dragged and dropped, so one extra node that gets added in the static structural as a default, that is imported body temperature. Now I can import the body temperature as the end temperature. Now, next thing what I have to do is that I have to fix because this wire was something that was fixed from both side. I can apply a fixity at this side also and I can solve this problem. Then you can post process all the structure behavior quantities. Okay. Now the next is that suppose uh, in this case that is not something that is going to make much sense for this problem. But suppose if your structural deformation is going to further affect your thermal electric system behavior, then in the, that case you want to do everything as in a coupled fashion. So suppose if I use a coupled field static system, let me first connect it at the geometry level. Go to this engineering data source and add the same copper alloy. Now, if you notice one thing, because we had added a coupled field system, and by default, if we look at this uh, setup level, so we can use under the coupled field static the following physics, a structural, acoustic, thermal, and electric. And as a default one, a structural and thermal are something that are activated by default. Now, if we look at this one, uh, so you can see only thermal properties and the structural properties are something that are listed here. Now, let me go back to the model coupled field static GUI. Okay, so the model is open and I'm not going to play around with the mesh setting. So I will go directly with the default mesh setting. Now, if I go to the physics region, I can go to the electrical and put a conduction node here. Now, let me just go back to the copper alloy again. And if I now look at the copper alloy, I can see the electric isotropic resistivity is something that is activated by default. So if you have the properties defined under the engineering data, so only thing is that based upon the physics preference, like if you are not activated the electrical, so you might not be able to see the resistivity properties that might be even defined for that uh, uh, this uh, material model, but that just get that automatically gets hidden based upon the physics setting that we control from the GUI. So nothing to be confused at that point. So th that's the reason I actually wanted to highlight that thing. Now this case what I want to do is that I want to define so you can see all those boundary conditions for the structural thermal and electric along with acceleration and the other physics uh, vis plastic heating and viscoelastic heating or something that is exposed under the coupled field static so let me first uh, go to the electrical on this side I want to apply a 0 0.1 volt another way is that you can directly select the geometrical entity right click insert thermal or oh, sorry electrical and I can put a voltage ground or let me just uh, do it in the fashion that I did so I can put a zero voltage also here at this location now next is that I want to add some type of convection condition so I will select this face again I will put a value of one and now I can also apply the structural boundary condition in the same model so fix support Okay, so I'm applying fixity on both sides. And uh, let me also just. So whatever this setting I'm doing, this is, you can assume I'm just allowing initial minimum and maximum to be five. But for complex application, you definitely need to use some other values. And for that, uh, there are some good material that are already available. So you can do a Google search like uh, how to decide the substepping for ANSYS uh, 
models so you will uh, find very good videos that are already available so that's that's the reason i'm not going to discuss on this thing so now you solve this thing after solving all the post processing parameters for temperature electrical and structure will be available as a post processing quantity okay so you can see these are some stress then if you go to the electrical i can plot the electrical voltage i, I can see this thing is 0.0.1 .0 and i can plot the temperature i can plot the deformations whichever quantities you want to plot you can plot using this post processing option by cl right clicking on insert and then all those post processing variable will be available Let me close this one. So that's all we I wanted to cover for this video. In case if you like the video, please don't forget to like and share at this video and also drop a comment so that I will be aware that you, you are interested in seeing more videos in this series. Thank you. See you in next video.